Loudfire. Loudfire! <laughs> All right, so we are in day three of our Unity class. Today we're going to go over uh, colliders and uh, reflection probes and whatever else we can add into this thing in a given amount of time. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so uh, as you know, last time we um, we light baked the house using um, sub, um subtractive method or well, shadow mask uh, method and uh, it came out pretty good also went over some uh some bakery you know what i'm saying all of that good little stuff so okay so you bring your house into vr chat right and you start you spawn in and you start falling through the floor why because you don't have any colliders in the world you know what i'm saying so your house is broken up into lots of different parts. You have to decide where colliders go. So first and foremost, we know we're gonna put one on the land, so we're gonna highlight our land. You know that you have it highlighted because you have the orange line around it. If you see a blue line around something, that's because it highlights the entire prefab. You know, so uh, 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 now if you have like a main model, <coughs> As the root, um, as the root of your prefab, then you can put a collider on it because it's the root of the prefab. But everything else in it would need a collider too. In this case, uh, this house is not the root of it because if you click on inspect, um, if you select it and go to inspector, you have no mesh rendering components. So if you click on um, your your um, your your house, right? Well, let's click on the land first. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, there we go. So over here you have a lot of different uh, things that pop up, right? You have a mesh filter, and mesh filter tells you uh, which which mesh um, you have inserted in here. The mesh renderer, you know what I'm saying, it, uh, it renders your mesh, lets you, uh, you know, uh, 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 select options of casting shadows, receiving shadows, contributing to the global illumination, meaning that when light bounces off of something, will it bounce that color, you know, a little bit of that color as well. You know what I'm saying? So it does uh, contribute to the global illumination. You have your scale of your light map. Normally, your object size and light map, when it says this object size and light map has reached the max atlas size, uh, in some cases, this can this this means nothing. In some cases, it can be bad, uh, meaning that uh, that whole area is not properly, uh, may not properly be uh, mapped, which in this case it is. You know what I'm saying? We are, uh, except for, it's not, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the shadows from the house in the back, all that good little stuff. So it is, um, it is mapped out properly. Uh, let's see, uh, your light probe, well, your probes, uh, whether you're using uh, reflection probes or light probes. You know what I'm saying? And uh, light probes, basically, now we didn't go over that last class, and light probes is basically, um, probes that's in the world that uh, 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 that translates the data in the um, in the scene like uh, your character is walking around and you have light probes that are in the scene uh, when, when your character or an object that you have crosses into one of those light probes it uh, calculates the data for that probe and you'll see either the object or yourself get lighter or darker the more light probes you have in the world the better the translation of the um, of the light probe data uh, we're not going to use light probes in this particular build, but um, we will, as the uh, class goes along, we'll definitely get into uh, get into some light probes. All right, and then down here you have your um, your materials that is um, that is on that particular mesh. Also up here, this little this little uh, drop down here also shows you which materials is in there. Um, you can either drag and drop your materials directly onto the mesh, or you can drag and drop your materials into one of the slots up here. That's um, that's that's given. All right. So first things first. If you scroll down over on the right hand side, you have this add component area. These um, this is where you will add different Unity built-in Unity components or different scripts. You know what I'm saying? Whether you know whatever whatever it is that you plan on um, bringing on to that particular object now in this case we are going to use a collider so we're going to type in collider and you have a lot of different colliders that come back now for this particular mesh since 
we don't want to use a box collider because it's going to literally put the mesh into a big big ass box and when you spawn into the world it's going to throw you around everywhere because it's trying to put you on top of the collider so what we're going to use is going to come down here and use mesh now let's remove that and go to add component again instead of typing in collider if you know the type of collider you want you just type in mesh and that collider will pop up up there so we'll use mesh collider and it's automatically added on here you know what i'm saying so it mesh collider it it calculates um everywhere you know there's bends and curves and and stuff in the mesh allowing you to navigate you know what i'm saying over the uh, over the mesh of how it uh, of how it's shaped all righty so we got that one on there so we're just going to go around this this um the house and we're going to just add mesh colliders we're going to add one on the actual house itself we're going to go here to our did I add, did I combine all of that? Oh, cool, 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 good deal, good deal, okay, great. All right, now you can put a mesh collider on your seats if you want to, now if you got GoGo Loco, you know what I'm saying, you can, you'll be able to sit on top of the mesh collider, you know, uh, but if you don't, but then also you can put a menu in your world to disable, to disable mesh colliders. So what I'll do is I'll put a mesh collider on here and as the class goes along, we will, uh, I'll show you how to uh, institute UI menus and stuff to uh, disable, disable uh, mesh colliders. Now the, so the mesh collider is not the same as the SIT collider, correct? No, 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 no. Now the SIT collider, the SIT collider is being used as a trigger. You see right here where it says is trigger? Mm-hmm. You would, you would check this if you want that collider to be used as an interactable button or something, like whether you're picking up something or, or something like that. All right, so let's continue adding. I think uh, I think all of this is combined together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is. So let's put some on the windows, mesh collider on the windows because you don't want you falling out the window. Like we're, So we're just putting it basically where it, it, it matters. We can put one on the bit. Well, I'm not going to put one on the. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put one on the. On the uh, let me see. Is that? Uh, yeah, we'll put one on the bed. And then you can disable the mesh collider if you want to walk into the bed or whether if you want to lay on top of it. Uh, we will add a mesh collider to our glass here. I don't want nobody just, you know, I don't want you to walk into the, into my shower, you know, you, you gotta, you know. <laughs> you gotta earn that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, you oh my God. Uh -huh. So mesh collider on my counter here, uh, on this thingy right here. All right, so just everywhere that it matters. So we're going to back up out of there. We're going to go into. So basically, you're putting mesh colliders on everything you don't want people to walk through. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm going to put them on these doors. Put them on these doors, and then you can also hold control and select multiple items at a time, and then add the mesh collider to both of them. So it's 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 applied individually to both uh, doors. Anything? In, okay, so y'all, that's one item too. Okay, so don't forget to put colliders on your steps. You not want to come up in this thing and try to walk up your steps and. So let me ask you a question. Why could you not just do A to select all and add a collider to everything? Because some things I don't want to collide on. Some things I just don't want to collide on. Like what, like can you give me an example of what would you what you would not want? Like this TV. You know what I'm saying? I don't really need a mesh collider on there. You know what I'm saying? Not really. Okay. Unless someone's going to jump up on the counter and try to, you know what I'm saying, run into there. But, but. Uh, as a matter of fact, the TV on the inside, though, this right here, I can put a mesh collider on it. Because if I don't, 
when this wall opens up and you somebody could run at the TV and they will literally run out the other end of the mesh collider that's in here because this is an open it's an open space. Well, then they're gonna learn today. Gonna learn today. <laughs> Straight, up. Straight up. All right, so I got colliders everywhere that I feel I need them. Um, your model that's in the scene, that you can uh, mute them out. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need bangers at this point. All right, so we have our colliders placed where we want to. Now we're gonna look at maybe placing some light probes. So I'm gonna go into a orthographic view by pressing um, perspective mode in our, our isometric mode right here on the right hand side you see that right there so we're going to go to isometric we're going to move this around until we can see the house front ways and then I'm going to go to game object I'm going to go down to light and I'm going to go to reflection probe so we're going to put in the reflection probe now we're going to put in multiple probes into this world, multiple probes, because we want, we want a certain level of, uh, of, of uh, hyper-realism, right? So once I bring in this reflection probe, you can see the box around it. In order to, uh, to properly set this up, I need to go here to the, this little button here, click it, and that gives me my handles on the side for me to place it into the house. Now, whatever this touches it's going to reflect that. All right, so let's turn this way. Let's go back to, uh, let's click on our reflection probe. Let's turn this off first. That way we can kind of move this where we want it, then click it again, then set it up. All right. So now with that reflection probe is in there, this spear represents the reflection. So we're gonna click that right there. We're gonna drag this spear, place it in somewhat in the middle of our room. Yeah, that's good. And then from there, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click bake. All right, so now, if you notice, if you look on the floor now, you actually have the reflection of the ceiling down there on the floor. You have the reflection of the paintings and stuff on, over here on, on the inside. Mm -hmm. Instead of reflecting the outside skybox. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well said. So now we will go down to this reflection probe. We are going to do control D. Mm -hmm. and we're going to duplicate it. And I'm only going to use two reflection probes in here. One for, um, one for the bathroom and one for the um, uh, 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 house itself. So, but the one in the bathroom is going to do something a little bit different. Question, Kim? Question, Kim? Sure. Um, when you're adding, when you're, so for example, when you just put in all the colliders and now you're putting in these probes, um, they're not actual assets, but are they adding to the size of the world? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are adding in size of... Uh, 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 for 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 pick you know for um shit for um Fine. for your images Fine. yeah yeah for your for your images Bob now it, now this doesn't now it does can now depending it can contribute contribute to um uh, 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 size as well it just uh, it just depends mm -hmm. you know so it's it just got to just gotta be um mindful of, uh, of, of of that you know of your um, you can you, and you can compress them as well you can compress light probes as well you can compress that stuff so what I'm going to do I'm going to add this in here just into the bathroom portion if I can see it that down all right all right and then we're gonna bake that one and now we got the bathroom in here now for PC 
PC has a more accurate representation of reflections than Quest does. In order to do that, this option right here, box projection, you click it and you see that? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it does a very accurate representation of, um, of reflections in the world. But when you upload this for Quest, it will not show for Quest. So we put that in there, so we're good. Good deal, good deal. All right, so we got our reflection probes in there. And then now I am going to grab um, this reflection probe here, duplicate. I'm gonna bring it over here by my water. I am going to shrink it down a lot. Because all I want is this reflection probe to touch the water. Ah, what is ouch, 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 ouch. Yeah, it hurts. See how that how it changes when I got right there on top of the water? Because mm. it hasn't been baked yet. So I'm gonna grab that one. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna pull that over here that right there and then now I am going to bake that one and then bake this one yeah so now you see you actually see the reflection from the house now in there that's very cool that's very cool so we got our reflection probes, and then we have a, a large world reflection probe as, um, as well. All right, so we got our reflection probes in here. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got our colliders, and we have our reflection probes. Right. So now we want to set our spawn point. So instead of having the spawn point right there, I guess I'll bring the spawn point out about right here. The blue arrow is the um is the it's the direction that you're facing in. Especially when you when you have this on and make sure this is on local to see where you're looking at when you spawn in. So yeah, we can turn that this way and then key in 90 for accuracy. Uh if this is below the world, you will spawn below the world. So make sure that it's right on it, or if you want to just drop down a little bit. And yeah, you should be um should be good. Alright, so this is so this is ready for testing before we um before we put anything else in the world. Um what I would probably start doing at this point that I have um, all of this set up, I'll start placing um, a chair, I'll start bringing in other assets like chairs, video screens, you know what I'm saying, all of that good little stuff. So first and foremost, let's let's bring in a, tele, a television. Um, or, no. Nah, no, 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 because I'll have to go to the animation class with y'all first on how to, uh, animate these doors and stuff which you know what oh uh, shit you know what um you know what let's do that let's 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 do that okay let's do that we, yeah we got time okay so we're gonna do some simple animation we're gonna go up here to window we're gonna go down to uh uh uh, uh, uh animation we're going to get an animation window. We're going to dock our animation window down here. And we're going to go back to window. We're going to go back to animation. And we're going to get an animator window. And it's going to be docked automatically up here. So go back to our scene. We are going to find these, these panels, right? So the good thing about Unity 2022 and up I don't have to break this prefab now in order to do it to in order to get access into this prefab. You know what I'm saying? Normally if you break a prefab, 
Well, normally what I would have to do, I would have to duplicate all four of these panels and then do my animation in there. But uh, Unity 2022 it up, you know what I'm saying? This allowed us to, uh, to not do that. So first thing what I want to do is I'm going to go to one of these. I want to go to game object and I want to create an empty, an uh, empty object that I can just put shit in. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to grab this game object, we're going to center it right there. I'm going to name it um, um, monitor doors. Good deal. So now I'm going to take these monitor doors. I'm going to place this inside of my prefab. And I'm going to click on here. I'm going to find all four of these right here. And I'm going to drag them into my monitor door. Oh, no, I got the. Oh, no, nope, no, nope, it won't allow it. All right, so this is what we do. This is what we do. We're going to move this back up out of here. We're going to grab these here. We're going to duplicate them and then the original ones, we're going to click on those and we're going to hide them because we don't need them because we have to move this outside of the prefab. You can move duplicated objects outside of the prefab. So we're going to grab those and we're going to drop them inside of our empty that says monitor doors. So now if I click on monitor doors, you can see it highlights in blue because all of these objects are inside of the prefab. Because we want to animate everything that's on the inside of here. So we put the animation on the on the uh, the main object instead of the individual objects inside. So we're going to click here. We're going to go over here to our animation. We're going to click create. And we're going to call this uh, monitor open. And click OK. So now you see a timeline comes up. We are going to click on the record button to record what what we're going to click on. So now when I click on this first one, no, nope, I don't want that one. I want this one. So there are some things that we're going to have to pay attention to, such as the position. Got to pay attention to the position. So what I want to do first is, as a matter of fact, I want to grab both of these at first and I want to slide both of them back just a little bit and as you see it made a keyframe but I don't want that there so let's undo I'm gonna go up a couple of seconds to about 10 frames then I'm gonna slide that back so now it makes two keyframes the starting point which is zero pretty watch see mm. as you slide along the keyframe all right, so now that I got that to that point, now what I want to do, I want to click on an individual one, and I want to I want to go up to about maybe 20, and I want to drag that one over to here, and I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to drag that open to here. Now watch when I go along this right here. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go to 30 now. And we're going to grab uh, this one and this one, I believe. Yeah, that one and that one. Oh, 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 nope, 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 nope. We're going to grab all of these now. All of those. We're going to slide them back in just a tad bit. About right there. And then we're going to go forward a little bit more and then grab that one, grab that one, and then slide that one over right there. And then grab this one, grab that one, slide that one over right about there. So now, That's how that works. Nice. That's how that works. Alright, so once you do that, right? Once you do that, you have to make a closing animation. So how you do that is we're going to highlight everything um, in this list. And we're going to reverse it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we're gonna go right here to this drop down button 
and we're going to create new clip and copy that one and then call this closed click save and we're going to paste it and we're going to do a little reverse work here oh god I am oh my goodness which which can be aggravating aggravating because you have to remember like how you just can't write you just can't click on it and say reverse you know oh damn you know, you know what I'm saying so what I want to do is I want to grab these two I mean this one here I want to put that one first this one right here I want to put that one there I want to grab all of these move these over some and these are done in increments of 10 so right there right I think no what what no no one more yeah one more yeah there. all right and then this one here right there all right so let's double check the other one right, so, yep, 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 yep. okay cool 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 okay good deal so let's check that So if it's going forward, it'll close. Bam. Good job. Bam, Good job. Bam. All right. So now that you've now that we've done that, we want to come up here to our animator. We have two animations in here now. Monitor open, monitor close. We want we don't want um uh, 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 this animation to automatically start when we come into the world. So first and foremost, and we don't want it to loop either. So first we find monitor open, which is right here. We click on it and we cut the loop off. Click on that one, cut the loop off. You know what I'm saying? Because if you have the loop on, it's just going to continuously loop, 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 loop. You know what I'm saying? All that good shit. So what we want to do is we want to create a new layer in here. Create a new empty state. We're going to call this new state idle. We want this to be the default state, so we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to uh, set as layer default state. Alright, and then we are going to right click on here, we're going to make a transition to this animation. Then we're going to right click on this one, make a transition to this animation. Then we're going to right click on this one and make a transition back to this animation. That way they're in a constant a constant uh, loop of when you press the button for it to either open or close. So this is initially when you come into the world, and then this is after you press the the, 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 uh, the state. So this will be uh, what uh, false, true, false, either false, true, false, or true, false, true. So one of one of these motherfuckers. So all right. So this is the before we get into all of that, we are going to set up a we're going to set up a button. All right. So we're gonna. This will be your first. <laughs> this will be your first class into making a simple, basic UI. All right. Oh man, man, we're going through a lot. This is yeah. This is crazy. All right. So to do a UI, UIs, as you know, UIs make a world um, more more accessible you know what i'm saying user friendly and stuff you know what i'm saying you got toggles interactive toggles, sliders you know what i'm saying all kinds of shit going on you know what i'm saying so in order to do that you want to go up to the game object you want to go to your ui and you want to create a canvas all uis operate on a canvas you're, you're just like when you paint right you have to put something on a canvas you know what i'm saying so the same way in here you want to put your ui on a canvas now, as you see, the canvas came up down here. We're going to name this canvas dash monitor. All right. So there's some there's some things, some some checks that we got to go through to ensure that um that our canvas is set up correct. First and foremost, we want the layer to be on a default layer. We don't want it on the UI layer because the UI layer will read directly into your HUD. Like when you come into the world, you'll see this menu literally in your face everywhere you go. So you don't want that. All right. So we change this to default. We want the render mode to be on world space. We want it to be in the world space. Um, we need to add a component for this UI to interact with VR chat. So you're going to go into Add Component, and you're going to type in VRC UI. 
and you want the VRC UI shape. So you add that in there. And just for good measure, add in a box collider. Well, well, yeah, anyway. Well, no, as a matter of fact, remove the box collider. We're gonna add that again in a second because we got to shrink this shit down. Because right now, the UI literally is like big as hell in this world somewhere. There it is. That shit is shit's massive. You know what I'm saying? So we have to shrink it down to a um to a to a smaller scale. So you want to go in the scale, you want to type in 0 .001. All four. Point zero zero one. I mean all three. Point zero zero one. Alright, so now our UI should be a little bit smaller up there now somewhere. It's it's back there somewhere. But we're gonna bring it to us. So I want to go to where I want my UI to be set at. I want to go to my, my canvas. I want to right click and I want to select a line with the view, meaning a line with the direction I'm looking in. So if I click that and then I back out, now my UI is right there in my face. I want to flush it. So let's make sure our uh, rotations are correct. So zero, zero and one eighty. The blue line indicates the direction that the back of your UI is facing. Okay, keep that in mind. The blue line represents the back of your UI. So you might want to, you know what I'm saying, put that there. We're going to adjust this a little bit, make this a little smaller. Pull that in about right there. Yeah. All right. So now let's start dressing this thing up a little bit. So first and foremost, we want to have a panel in here. So we're going to go to UI, and we're going to select panel. You can put an image in there, you know what I'm saying, anything you want. So let's go to panel. It's going to put that in there. We're going to change this to uh, a black panel. We're going to maybe put bump up the, uh, the, uh, the opacity a little bit. About right there. That looks good. And so we put it, oh, nope, 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 my bad. Make sure you're clicking on the main the main um, root if you want to move it so that's so now we know our UI panel is right there on the wall All right, cool uh, let's lift it up a little bit yeah that's yeah that's good that should be accessible to tall avatars and midgets I mean uh, short avatars <laughs> Don't blame me, little pal. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. So now that we got our panel set up, we want to put um, we want to put some uh, um, a, a toggle in here, not a button. See, some people like buttons, but I like toggles because toggles will tell you the state of something, whether it's on or whether it's off. So we're gonna click on panel, right click. We're gonna go to UI, and we're gonna select toggle. All right. So now it comes in really small. We're gonna expand it out some. We're gonna uh, do all this little funny shit. Bring it in some. Now keep in mind that you can only you can only interact with something that's inside of the canvas. So if you take a button and you move it out of the canvas, you cannot interact with it. Got to make sure that this in that the that the button itself is inside of the canvas. And you can change a lot of these functions and stuff around too. So one thing that we're gonna do first, we're gonna mess with this um with the text so if we open up toggle we can click on the label we're going to call this um uh, uh, what shoot toggle monitor so as you see as i started typing it disappeared so what i want to do is i want to make this font look kind of nice so let's go, I'm gonna bump this up to like 30. And as you see, it disappears, which is cool. We're gonna go right here to our um, our, our um, rectangular tool. And we're gonna bump this up so we can see this first. All right, so now we can see it. I wanna change the font. I don't have any fonts in here, which sucks. Which, we'll get to that later too. I'm going to change the uh, color and then go to my, my universal tool and now I can scale this back down. Alright, so 
I also want to change out this check mark. I don't want this check mark here, so let's go to background. That shows the background of your toggle. Right here, the source image. You can load up any type of source image you want. You can, man, your buttons and your toggles can be anything that you want them to be. You know what I'm saying? Anything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna use what's defaulted in here. So I'm gonna go there, we're gonna grab this, this circle here. I'm gonna put that one in there, then I'm gonna open up my background and change out the check mark too. I'm gonna make that a circle as well. But I'm going to change the color of it to black. And then I'm going to go here to my scale and scale it down. Just like that. So now if I go back to my toggle, when people cut it on, see this right here where it says is on? You click that. And now you see how your toggle comes on and cuts off. So we're going to leave it, um, we're going to leave it off because it's not you know, open. All right, so now we can get into um, we can get into actually putting some um, putting some code in here. So one um, one that I like to use, I will put this um, I will put this one in the chat as well. Give me one moment to locate it. Let's see here. This one is in. Uh, I think I put that one in. Uh, hold up, hold up. Yeah, okay. In here. Toggles. No, 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 no. no. Give me one moment. Let's see if I can find this one real quick. Folder. So first, I'm going to create a folder in here. Uh -huh. I'm going to call this folder scripts. So as I start bringing scripts into uh, my project, you know what I'm saying? I'll have a place to put them. And I'm going to grab my door controller script and I'm going to drop it in there. All right. So let me show you how this is set up. So we're going to go here. We're going to click on door animation. We're going to go to open Udon graph, which is the visual this is the visual um visual setup now this um this is a a, a a network controller so once you click on it once you click on this this sends a custom event to everybody in the world and that custom event will be to toggle the door and it'll open up for everybody so this is this is your visual scripting um it'll update for late joiners you know what I'm saying? So if anybody comes into the world late, it'll run whatever it'll run whatever the master has um, set, and it'll open up the uh, the monitor for the late joiners as well. All right, so let's go. Not too much into that. I'm not going to get too much into visual scripting. Uh, uh, Marcus is going to um, do a class with you guys on uh, on, visual, on on a little visual scripting. All right, so what we want to do? We want to go over to our canvas again we want to go to our toggle navigation anytime you're doing buttons um, or sliders navigation change your navigation to none reason being is because uh, for some reason when you have it set on um, when it's set on uh, 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 everything what it, it, it your movements on your uh, your thumbstick will actually change the buttons and stuff no matter where you're at in the world so make sure you put that on none all right so now we want to add functionality to this so inside of my toggle i'm going to come down to add component i'm going to type in udon behavior and we want to grab udon behavior and drop that in there so udon behavior component is looking for a udon script so we're going to take this script that we just put into our world we're going to drop that into the udon behavior all right so now it's also since this looks for an animation it's asking for an animator to put in here so first and foremost i'm going to go up here i'm going to lock my screen so i can't like if you see if i go back and forth between these my inspector changes but if i lock this and i click anywhere around the world it doesn't move so i want to go to the object that has this animator on it right so let's go 
here to my doors, which that's it there, monitor doors. And since I can't, I can, well, yeah, I can drag and drop this since it has the animator on it right here. And it reads the animator that's on it. All right, so this is almost set up. So now, if I was to come in here and click this button, even with this script on here, nothing will happen because I don't have a I don't have a, a own value changed here. This right here is your is your own clicks own value. You might see own own value changed or on click. Th that is what um when you click the button, it's supposed to do something that you have in here. So we're gonna set this up to where when we click it, it's gonna read this script. So we're gonna add a value. We're gonna take our udon behavior and we're gonna drag it up into that value. And for the function, we're gonna go down to our udon behavior that we put in there and we're gonna put it on interact because inside of the udon graph, the oh. event is called interact. All right. So we have our we have this Udon method changed to interact. So now if we click this button, it's going to look at this script. It's going to run the interact method, and whatever is on this script is going to run that on um, run that script. All right, but still not completely set up because inside of this Udon graph, it's looking for something to do. Toggle door is the custom event, right? Toggle door, update door. But the bool is open, just right here. So this needs to be inside of my animator. So I'm gonna come over here to my animator window. I'm gonna click on parameters. I'm gonna add a new bool. This bool will be called open. So whenever this script runs, it's going to run a, um, it's gonna look for a custom event called open um, that's running over here and it's going to run this animation all right so let's set this up we're going to go here let's unlock this so we can see what's going on over here all right so let's go here we're going to go to our conditions we're going to add a condition that condition is going to be true we're going to go here we're going to add a condition which will be false and then here we're going to add another condition which will be true so let's check to see if this works now if it's true if it is true let's see did it change and something's weird with my light page. I don't know why that did that but we're going to fix that too so I don't see it open up there, but let's go up there and check. And I put a mesh collider on these doors, then I, I can't even get through my door. <laughs> Exit. Let's go to the doors down here. Take the mesh collider off. Uh, mesh collider. Let's just turn that off. I wonder why this did that with the with the shadow mask out here. That's strange. I wonder why they did that. That's funny. Well, I'll figure that out later. In the meantime, let's check this TV. Alright, so let's close. Right through here now. Yep, yep, yep. You can hold shift when you're in the simulator to run faster. Shift and run. Oh, nope, I don't want to do that. Alright, so let's see here. Alright, so we have an issue. And let's check what it is. One moment. Oh, 
Okay, so in order for animations to work, if you bake lights on something, right, and you want it to work after that, you need to come in here and take the static off because static is saying that these objects do not move. So make sure that you turn your static off. And let's try this again and see how bad it messes up. Now, what you could do, come over here to your animator, click on your animation, right here the speed, you can take your speed down, take mine down to point 0.1, take this one down to point 0.1. Make two. it look a little smoother. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see now. Oops, I have to restart this since I changed that. I can't wait to walk through the house. Nice. And that's how you do a button, cuz. <laughs> with, 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 uh, with an animation. And now sometimes it uh, it may take a minute depending on how the animation runs, but it'll it'll definitely go through the animation. Now if you want to, you could you could go a step further in all of this. You could put the TV on the animation and have it pop out or something, but I'm not going to do mine like that because I got my doors blocking it and that'll look kind of stupid. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's how you'll do that. Now, um, can you speed up the, the animation like in between the two doors, like when the first one opens or or closes? Uh, yes, you can. That'll be done. That'll be done um, down here in your animation. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, it, however you set this on, um, however you set this up. Oh, so so you so instead of using um twenty between, you can put it down to like I mean ten. You can put it down to five. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. 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 And this works for all doors. I mean, all door. If you instead of um, if instead of you putting a trigger collider here to walk into, I could set it up to where this is a click. You know what I'm saying? Instead of having a uh, uh, toggle there, you know what I'm saying. You could well, you know, so you could put a toggle here or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and put to where these are slide, this will slide open, you know, and you know you mm -hmm. click the button and the doors will slide open. You click it back and it'll slide back closed, you know what I'm saying. Or you can put a trigger collider there, where it'll um when you step into a zone, the doors will automatically open. But in this case, I think it'll probably be best to do um, a button like this over there. So you can take your one canvas there, you know what I'm saying, you can duplicate it. Unless you wanna put it, unless you wanna put a, um, a box collider around, you know what, I'll show you, you know what, yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do, I'll, I'll show you that way. Yeah, 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 cause that way you know, you will have two methods of knowing how to do this. So we want to take this door, we want to duplicate it, we want to mute that one out, we want to take this one here, we want to add a box collider to it, and as you see it puts a box collider around the entire door, which is not what we want. 
because we also want to add a mesh a mesh collider in here as well but the box collider we're going to click this button right here that says is trigger so it, the system will know to um to trigger this this collider so we're going to make that small and match it up with that door here bam so we're going to put that there right so we got a main mesh collider on there to stop you from going through the door and we have a box collider on here that we're going to use as a trigger so now we're going to do the same thing we just did for the um for the sliding door so we're going to come over here we got that click on our door we're going to go to create uh, i'm going to call this slide open All right, we're gonna hit that right there. We're gonna hold control and slightly move this door and then move it back. If you hold control, it moves in increments, see? Mm. Mm. All right, so we're gonna put that one there and then we're gonna do the dub method. I'm gonna just go one click forward and then hold control and slide this door all the way open. All right, so now we got it opening super, super fucking fast. I'm gonna show you how to slow it down in a minute. All right, we're going to uh, grab both of these, copy. We're gonna go to create new clip. We're gonna grab that one and we're gonna call this slide closed. And what are we gonna do? Paste these in there and then reverse them so put that one right there grab this one and put that one right there so now we should have a close all right good deal all righty so now we're going to click on our cube we're going to go to our animator now these are going to be set up um a little bit differently we're still going to create a, um, an empty. Um, set its default layer. We're going to call this idle. Make transition. Make transition. Make transition. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to our parameters. We're going to create a new bool. We're going to call it open. Mm -hmm. Gonna go here, this will be true. And then go to our next one. This will be false. And then this one will be true. And the reason why you see these these these, these clips is because the loop is cut on. So we got to make sure that we cut the loop off. So let's go to project, let's click on both of these, turn the loop time off. And then once we go back in here now and click on this, now you see it's no no longer doing that. So now with this one, this is what's different. We're gonna go into the settings. Um, we're gonna uncheck has exit time. The duration, we're gonna put that up to like maybe two. Um, and the interruption source will be the next state. We'll go to this one. We will turn off the exit time as well. Put this up to two. And the interruption source will be the next state. This will just allow me to continuously click this button and open this door up, open and close, open and close, so no one, and it'll interrupt the state with the next animation state and open it up. All right, so back over to our scene now with our door. We're gonna now add a udon behavior all right we're gonna take our cube that has our animation on oh oh no oh, no oh, my bad my bad we're gonna go to our door animation script and we're gonna drop it over here then we're gonna take our cube which is our door our sliding door we're gonna drop that on there because it has the animation on it 
we're going to turn off the static because once again we can't see animations with, um, with the static on and I think I think we're good oh oh no 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 back over to our animator oh no yep yep we're good we created that that open so just double checking so we got our parameter we got all of this set up we got our script running in there we got a button that's on the door so let's click so with all these all these animations is there a button for local and global or is all the animation all all global these are um these are all global but there are there are animation there are um door openers that run locally okay they are some that runs locally. I just didn't load them all, uh, load them in. But I can um, load those in too if you want to switch it over to uh, to local. Well, hopefully now, if we walk up to this door now, we should see the whole door highlight, which I really didn't want to do, you know what I'm saying? But we have to click on it. And it's fast as shit. It's fast so, as hell. Let's, uh, let's go over to our animation. No, no, not our animation go to our animator these right here and we're going to is there a color changer for the the use for the who for, for the use like when you walk up to and it says use and it turns all blue is there a color changer for that I don't think so I've never seen one oh, okay I've never seen one so settings in here let's I was wondering if you could make like the whole box like invisible and just have the use pop up. I think this is. I think that's fixed duration. I believe. I believe. Um, turn the fixed duration off and put that on three. Let's see now. I think that's right. I'm not too sure. Unless that's frames or something. No. And I think um I think my door may be open up there. I think I messed up somewhere because I think that door is open. Oh no it's not. Oh no it's not. Okay, so Golly, why is the door open so quick? You know what? Where is that? time that must be checked uh, let me see I think the, uh, let's, let's check the exit time and a fixed duration Should have put my no. I'm gonna put my VRC world up there inside the room, so I don't got to be running all the way back up here when I want to test something. Okay, so it works for that one. Okay, so that first one is where it's messed up at. All right, so that initial one. This one here. Now, in some cases, you don't have to. The hell just happened? The hell? Oh, uh, no. What's going on here? Okay, there we go. What the hell is this? Let's 
probably because I was using that damn bakery that that shit fucked up my damn light now. Let's change something up. Let's go back to our animator. Let's remove the idle state. And uh, this one is set on false. Good deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. <coughs> All right, so yeah. So that did close. If it would have been set on true, it would have opened up when I spawned into the world. It's just setting, when it does that, it just sets the state for it. There we go. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to, uh, so... One thing that I do want to do is when you, okay, so you see how I was able to click that from a far distance? We don't want to be, we don't want to do that because you don't want somebody sitting down on the couch and they look that way and then you know, the thing, especially in quest mode, it'll highlight blue. Like mm -hmm. blue but in PC, you know, you only see a blue outline. So we're going to go to the proximity. We're going to change that down to 0.5. I said I was going to put my damn <laughs> spawn point up in the house, man. I keep on forgetting. So we can put those doors. We can put that here on these doors. So when we click them, they open. So now, see, as I come up to it, you don't, you don't see it. You have to literally like get closer to it to mm -hmm. open it up. Mm -hmm. and you can click back and forth between it and it opens and closes instead of following through the entire animation see and I could have did that to this too you know what I'm saying but nah. so yeah so that's um that is that so it was the idle button that you had to delete yeah I removed the idle button mm. the idle button it um <clears throat> it took away that initial setting the state of it being of it's already closed you know what i'm saying so it's an mm. idle state of whatever state that you have it that, that the initial animation is set in so uh so yeah i just took that away okay all right so that is that and so you can do you can add those to um to all of your doors you can add that to water to stoves to refrigerators to toilets flushing all of that stuff all of that stuff works by that basic um basic animation and stuff okay you know, uh, all your doors down here you can put them on there you can put them on both of these doors at the same time you know what i'm saying and both doors are open inwards or outwards however you want to um however you set the um the animation up to to do that so i'll let you guys mess around with that and let me see why my dang light bit messed up like that man that's that's just that's just weird you know what let me so Kit, because I haven't uploaded my um, house like how you've uploaded it inside Unity, if I make changes to it, will it still grab like my changes because I haven't uploaded it yet? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. And then even while it's in Unity, if you go back over to Blender and make changes, if you overwrite the file that's in Unity, it'll um it'll it'll update those changes. Oh, okay. So as soon as you hit save in Blender, it automatically does it in Unity. It, it brings yeah, over the new app. And if you have light baked the world prior to doing that, it's going to mess up your light bake. So all you have to do is just rebake your lights. Okay. Because I, I made changes to to um, the world. So I was wondering if it, if it will, will still grab the same file. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 
I believe that my light bake was messing up when I went into um into simulation mode due to the fact that I have um bakery scripts running in the session. So in order for my Unity light bake to work right, I would have to either use um, um either or completely remove completely remove um bakery or um or the other one. See and see that's and see that's what's that's what's been happening. Yep. So let's. Let's clear, let's clear bakery out. Let's see, let's clear, clear bake data. Oh, you know what, no, 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 let's just do the, do the data, yeah. There we go. Let's see if it acts right now. it was the bakery program that was doing all that no it was the bakery scripts that was running that was messing up the light map that i baked using on um, unity's light light mapper mm. so that's why i was saying you have to you want either use one or the um one or the other and well, now it possibly could have worked if I would have cleared the um, cleared the bakery data and cleared the um, the Unity data, then just used the um, the Unity Light Mapper. Possibly, mm -hmm. maybe. Oh, that's what I was thinking oh, last was class. Could you 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 were trying one, then the other, then the other, and that's what I was saying. Do they overlap and they're and they're gonna get like confused in there? Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're at that is the issue here. So. Let's go to the bakery again. Let's clear clear bake data. I'm gonna clear all clear clear. Go to my light bake over here. Make sure this is clear. Um, and then, uh, so if you would have just used used bakery. only bakery initially, this wouldn't have happened, correct? Uh, probably. Okay. Probably. Unless I didn't accidentally went in here and changed my damn bakery settings too. I'll, I'll, I'll know in a minute. Something I'm using down here is it's on got a speculum going on or something. Is that that? Nope. Mm, what this right? Nope. It's doing some little wonky shit down here with the transition. Stress it too much. God, dude, that thing is some hard shadows. That is some super hard shadows. Oh. Some, some super hard shadows. that shadow mask so I could probably boost that shit here Thank you. 
chance to get my shadow rules or what? Nope, nope, nope. Okay, nope, nope, nope. Shadows hard as hell. And now they got ambient occlusion intensity that's up. shit right here, that's a big no. I don't like that shit. Man, on another note though, man, my sister just ordered a Nintendo for $15 and I'm just mad because when I first got my Nintendo at the age of like 10, the thing cost my grandma like $150. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean dark as shit. Okay, let's see what the so we still got some noise and issues going over here. Definitely some noise issues. Yeah. Okay, I'm mess with that song. See what we can get the fake out of that shit or some shit. If you use bakeries directional light instead of um instead of their directional light so they give you they give you a directional light that um that they want you to use that our bakery wants you to use that's that's that probably um possibly is the damn issue um so what you're saying is like use use one or the other don't like mix and match but you, but but you can't initially see their directional light when they when it's when it's in the world, though. which I don't know why. But now they do got another asset called the bakery. Um, I think it's some bakery rendering engine that shows you what this what it's supposed to look like once you, before you bake it or something like that. Mm. Uh, I haven't I haven't messed with that one yet though. I, I haven't I've never messed with that one. I might test it out. This is Unity's. See, Unity you know, did the shit correctly, so it's probably the um, it's probably using Bakery's um, directional light instead of our uh, Unity's. So I'll, mm -hmm. go with that. I'll go with that one for right now since it's not giving that many, not that much uh, noise issues and stuff. Not too much noise. I'm saying I could I could deal with that. But yeah, so that's um that's our reflection probes, our our mesh colliders, um, uh, animation on and animations on doors. And I guess next week we'll uh, we'll place we'll do a little bit more UI work and also put some uh, put some seats in here. Mm -hmm. So what I want to give y'all in the chat, I am going to. Drag on, let's see, I'm gonna give you this asset here. This okay, so this is the the door animation network asset. That's inside of Unity. I mean that's inside of all the, the chat here on the right. Um, let me see uh what else uh, ain't this one inside of hold on, let me see it's still one inside my crates. Hold one moment. The animations too. Say again. The animations the too. Oh no, the animations you you I, those ain't gonna work for you. You have to create you have to create 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 them yourself. Yeah, this this won't those won't work. If you you drag them in, then it'll be like what it applies to, and it, it yes, it, it'll be more it'll be more work to set these up within your own session than it would be just to create the um create the animation yourself. So they're not similar to Maximo's. Maximo, excuse me. Maximo, excuse me. It, it it depends if it depends on your controller. This right here, this right here, your controller is linked to a um to an object. You know what I'm saying? Your and your object has to has to match positioning and all kinds of stuff, man. It, it'll just it'll just be easy to make your own animations. I I would prefer for you to make your own animations. Then you you understand how the process works. 
know that I already know how to animate, but I thought <laughs> God used Mixamo too, <laughs> and it works well. But okay. <laughs> with the trigger zone but we're, we're not going to go over that today we'll, we'll, we'll go there next we'll go over that one I, i'm gonna see if i can get dub in here to um to do to do this one next week because he'll be much better at explaining it than my ass will but they are uh, but the script is in the um the file though so let me see if i can find this other one that's um not networked Looking for um for Dub's global one? No, no, no. I'm looking for the one that I use for uh for TVs for um for not for non network. Mm. That's in Mountain View. That's in Mountain View. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is the uh, scripts. Uh, Father, Carson, Dork, Dork. Yeah, there it is. There it is. This one right here. I'm going to bring that one into this session as well. inside the chat is the ones that will be um that will be working yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you just click on those and download them save them into a uh save them into a script folder and wham bam so uh marcus today oh shit Fix this shit at some point too. Well, get, Jesus. Maybe, maybe not. I might. I don't know. I'll leave that door closed. You know I'm saying. I'm gonna get this. This room goes to the to the homeless people. I ain't put no damn light in here either. Shit. Okay. That's all good. But yeah, today we went over uh, colliders, um, uh, uh, reflection probes. We set up a we set up a, a toggle UI button, and we also set up a toggle on the door here to click the door to open and close the door. Nice. Yep, yep, yep. And so next week we will. Um, we will mess around with uh, with some more UIs and also some seats. Putting in some seats and stuff. Bet. Yeah. No, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna upload this to VR Chat, and I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna come in here and test it. Yeah, 
capture from scene, capture, and basically you just name your, when you're doing this, you would name it, um, is it any content warnings, just in case you can add tags to it, uh, chill, club, whatever you want to do, um, and then you select the platform to upload it to, let me see, found one or more UI graphics using the shader, auto fix, so let's auto fix the, the UI. Alright, so everything looks good. We're going to upload it to Windows first. Going to check this and then click build and upload. Once that's done, we're going to click here, switch this over to Android, confirm. You're probably going to see a um, weird change in the reflection with re the reflection probe and stuff as well, because as you know, uh, that reflection probe, when you're doing uh, uh, the cube map like that, it doesn't work for Android.
When you download Bakery, does it automatically go into Unity? Like I downloaded it and I don't know where it is. Oh, you downloaded it? What you mean down? Uh, what you mean download? Well, well, I mean like like I went on the the, the site and and purchased it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So what you have to do is you have to go up to uh, go up to Window and go to um uh, asset uh, asset something. And another window is gonna go it's gonna open and then from there it's a drop down at the top left and you in, get that drop down. In Unity you're talking assets. about in Unity you're yes, talking in, about? In Unity. In Unity, yes, in Unity. So when you open up that that, that assets window, top left hand corner of that window there's a drop down and uh, you want to click on my assets and then in the search window over to the right type in bakery but if but if you don't if you haven't downloaded a bunch of assets it should pop right up when you go into uh, my assets hold on when this switch is over I'll, uh, I'll show you real quick yeah I, I don't even have I assets, don't have assets. Hold on, hold on, I'll, I'll show you hold on, in a second because I can't use the I can't use the window while it's doing this. Mm -hmm. So uh, go to window up here. Oh my bad, my bad, my, I'm so bad. I'm so I'm so sorry. Go down to package manager. Click on package manager. I'm remembering this shit. Okay, okay. Hold on. So I have to hold on. So I have actually have to open up the. The whole project. Because the only way you can use it is within Unity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it downloads directly into the into the project. Got you. Got you. So, oh, asset manager. asset manager. What did you say? Package manager. Oh, package manager. Okay. Here at the, tr the top, you'll see where it says packages. It probably might say Unity or some shit like that. Hit that little drop down arrow and change it to uh, My Assets. Right there. So Unity, Unity Registry.
industry or any project built in and all my assets. Click on my assets and you hear it? You what? See it pop right here for you. Hold on, package manager. And then you click on package. Packages. Okay. I'm not getting assets. So you went to window and you yeah. have a package manager? Yeah, I have the package manager open, but then yours says packages my asset. My my first thing that says packages in project. Yeah, click the little drop down arrow. Click oh, down. okay. There was two drop okay. I'm dumb. Yeah, okay. to, uh, my assets. No, you good. Okay. All right, so I'm probably going to pop in a little while to see this, but in the meantime, in between time, I am about to fix these kids some banner. Oh, yeah. Marcus, we have that meeting. Marcus City, we have that meeting, 8 o'clock. Yep, in like nine minutes, and I'm only going to be there for like 20 minutes, so, but hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I hear a little. Man. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we I'm only going to be there for like 20 minutes. We'll have another meeting at 8.30 outside the headset. Mm -hmm. So, uh, consultation for the uh, live event. <clears throat> so, nice. you may have to fill me in on the very end of it. So, yeah, I'm going to probably be there about 20 minutes max. And I'm going to try to focus and not have my headset turned up. Mm -hmm. Although, this should be interesting. Now, actually, you might want to have your headset on because this will be interesting. <laughs> yes, that is true. So I may be in my other meeting like, I'm sorry, I can't leave my other meeting. It's too good. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm ready to grab my headset. Hey, everybody, enjoy the rest of your night. And uh, I guess City and Blue, I will see you soon. All righty. All righty. See you in a minute. Everybody take care. I'm going to jump off because it's going to take me like a half hour to go across the house. So I'll be, <laughs> I will catch up with you guys. Thank you, Kip. You are so welcome. So welcome. So welcome. Have a good one. I will holler at you lovely people later. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks. All right, thanks, Kip. All right, thanks, Kip. Anytime, anytime. <laughs>